Okay, number five is pressure. We see lots of issues with pressure, okay? So the first thing I want to tell you is don't overpressurize something, okay? We have a kind of a joke in our shop that every time we build a sprayer and we send it out with the customer, we set it at 75, 100 PSI on a power sprayer, because that's all you need. We're not trying to, we're not trying to kill the, knock the bugs off the house, we're just trying to create a barrier, okay? But every sprayer that comes back in for service is at 200 PSI. So the joke is there must be a pressure ferry that goes to everyone's garage at night and turns up the pressure, okay? Now what we know is the, the technicians turn up the pressure because they want to get done faster, okay? And so if you run it too fast, there's some risks. The higher the pressure you run your pump at, you're going to create some problems. First of all, you're going to reduce the life of all, this, all the rubber stuff. So the gaskets, the O-rings, the hose, you're reducing the life because you're running at higher pressure. You increase the risk of drift because you're, you know, you're using higher pressure. You're going to have smaller droplets. You could have drift on, a, on the neighbor's property or on the, on the dog dish or the kid's bicycle, who knows what. And then also, clearly, if you're, away from the, if you're away from the sprayer, you're going to have a much bigger chemical spill at higher pressure than you would at lower pressure. So there's some clear risks of overpressurizing your power sprayer. But there's also, we also see it with, with backpacks and B&Gs. So what happens is someone, a technician is using his or her backpack and they're pumping it up and it doesn't spray, so they keep pumping it, okay? And if you know it takes, for example, 10 pumps to get your backpack to, to pump up, and you pump it 10 times and 11 times and 12 times, and it's, it's not spraying, don't keep pumping it. You're going to break it, OK? We see it all the time where guys will keep pumping it and pumping it and pumping it. And instead of having a $5 repair, they got a complete rebuild because they broke something, OK? So don't overpressurize it. You're, you know your equipment, and if it's not working the way you want it to, call someone. Call your boss and say, what do I do? Okay, and you can prevent a lot of downtime and a lot of cost. The other thing is we really want you to re release the pressure at the end of every stop, whether it's your B&G, your backpack, or your power sprayer. We used to say release it at the end of the day, but people would forget, and they'd put their equipment away under pressure. Okay? Now think about it. It's 120 degrees outside. On your truck, it's probably 140. So every th the pressure is going to get even bigger. So again, we're reducing the life of hoses, gaskets, O-rings, but we're also keeping guns and filters and everything else under pressure, reducing the life of everything you got. And if it's under pressure at night and there's a freeze, you're going to destroy something, guaranteed. I got some good photos of that, OK? So we recommend releasing the pressure at the end of every stop. You can either give them a little extra squirt or put it back in the tank if it's a power sprayer, OK? It'll eliminate a lot of problems.